Heather, four weeks away from the eclipse. How rare is this event? Because I feel like there's been a lot of eclipses lately. So is this something we're going to see again in 10 years or not? 20. The next one will be in 2044 that comes across the U.S. They're rare, but we still do get to see them. It just depends on how everything lines up between the sun, the moon, and the earth. Okay, and we had one recently, but it was not a total solar eclipse. So can you tell me the different types of eclipses? Yeah, so back in October, we had an annular eclipse. So for that one, the moon was farther away in the orbit to the, to the Earth. And so because of that, the moon did not fully block the sun's bright disk. And so when people viewed that, if you're in kind of the path of annularity, you saw this ring of fire that was around the, the sun, or around the moon, coming around the moon. But now for the total eclipse... The difference there is just that the moon is a little closer, and so it's going to be able to block 100% the the sun. And so for folks who are actually in that where the shadow kind of traverses across the U.S., you're going to be in the path of totality. So for this one coming up on April 8th, we have a lot of different folks that are going to be able to witness the path of totality. But for anyone else who's in the U.S., you will still get to view a partial eclipse. Okay, so I want to talk about that because I've heard kind of differing opinions here on if the partial is any good or not. So if you're in that path of 100%, great. What if you're in the path of 90%? I've heard people say there's a huge difference between that and totality. So can you give me the the DL on all of this? (laughs) Yeah, so if you're in a partial eclipse, you definitely need to make sure that you're wearing glasses or you're indirectly viewing the eclipse at all times, um, you will still see how the sun changes shape as the moon crosses through. So you'll see kind of different crescent shapes of the sun kind of poking around the moon. So you just won't have that full 100% obscurity where the, the, the moon is fully blocking the sun unless you're in that path of totality. So depending upon what percentage of partial you have, you will still see, you know, the sunlight will decrease a little bit. Some of the temperatures may cool down a little bit, but it won't be nearly as much as you would experience if you were in the path of totality. No, I, you know, I know that you can take off the safety glasses when you're in that couple of minutes or whatever of totality. How do you know when you're in that time period and if it's safe to take off the glasses and look up? Right. So what happens is that when you're looking through the glasses, you actually won't see anything at totality because the sun is completely blocked. So that's when you'll know, oh, I should take them off if I want to see something. Um, And so that's when if you remove your glasses, then you should be able to see the outer atmosphere of the sun or called the corona. And so because we're kind of getting close to solar max right now in 2024, so the sun should be more active. So there's usually these little kind of wispy things that will come and pop out from behind the moon. And so we're all hoping that we can see that because as a more active sun, we'll probably see kind of more like twists and um, braids kind of coming out from the sun during the totality period. So do you think you can see that with the naked eye or will you need a telescope for that? You should be able to see some with the naked eye. Granted, yes, the telescopes can help, but you should still be able to see some with the naked eye. What about um, Bailey's beads? Can you explain what those are and if we're going to see those? Yeah, so the Bailey's beads actually will show kind of right before you get into totality and then you'll see it again too upon exit from totality. And so what that is, is it's the last rays of the sunlight that are going through the topography on the moon's surface. So it's kind of going through the last valleys and things of the moon. And that's what kind of creates a few little dots of beads. And then it kind of traverses from there to maybe one dot, which is um, called the diamond ring usually. And then you'll see that again on the other side, exiting totality. Is there anything else that we should look for around us during those few minutes of darkness? Yeah, so... Seeing what wildlife does is very interesting. So because the the sunlight will decrease, it's kind of like a dawn or a dusk for animals. And so, I mean, animals, insects. Um, so you might hear crickets that start chirp or birds might start to talk more or bats might start to fly because they're thinking that, oh, it's time for me to come out. Um, and so and so listening to the sounds and then feeling the temperature change and um, it's it's just a full experience. Is there going to be some research done during those few minutes by by research scientists? Yeah, so we've got several different things that are happening. So um, there's actually three sounding rockets that are going to be taking off from Wallops, Virginia. So they will go off 
right before, during, and after um, the period of totality to kind of see how the atmosphere is changing. Uh, also, there's a student program. So there's this air balloon program that's happening with about 750 students. And so it's across 75 institutions across the U.S. And they all have an instrument that will be going up in different balloons. And so those will be studying how the atmosphere is changing as we go into this period of an eclipse. So this is such a great time to to do science. Um, so those are just a few items. Okay, so speaking of the atmosphere, um, a lot depends on good weather for good viewing. I'm curious if, let's say, you have complete cloud cover in your location. Will the glasses still work? Will you be able to see anything at all? Or is it just kind of over at that point? So, yeah, you have to have good weather to be able to see the eclipse without the clouds obscuring your view. Um, so hopefully it's partly cloudy and so the clouds may shift to the right or the left and then just during that time you'll be able to see the, the, the eclipse happening. My last question, I saw something about how um, research scientists can create artificial eclipses and the studying on the artificial eclipse versus a natural eclipse. Can you tell me what that process is about? Yeah, so one of the heliophysics missions, it's called SOHO and it actually does this. So it has a coronagraph which it has a disc that is aboard that instrument and it blocks out the bright disc of the sun so you can actually try to observe what's happening around it. The thing is though, when you do it artificially is that the light diffracts around that disc and so you can't actually view the lower part of the sun's atmosphere. And so we get a lot of great information from that, but there's that lower atmosphere, it's not available during um, normal routine operations. So an eclipse is a great time for us to see the full corona of the sun. Hey, thank you so much for watching. While you're here, check out some other videos you just may like.